Hi everybody, it's Rhonda Church Finn Frock of Fruitful Life Studio here in Exeter, California. That's right in the middle of the state of California. I am so happy to be back. So I have been really getting into watercolors on fabrics. This is one of the things I did while I was in my RV when my husband was out fishing. I did this watercolor scarf using IOD the butterfly stamp with black ink and just basic paints mixed with textile medium. These watercolor techniques that I'm going to show you today can be used with any of the IOD stamps, especially the ones that have a lot of negative space. So here you see the butterfly stamp. I also made a pair of matching shoes with that same watercolor technique. So let's get started. Okay. So I'm gonna start out with chrysanthemums. So what I would usually do if I'm doing a large scarf, I would start like with the largest flower that I'm going to use. So this one, the chrysanthemums, again, I'm starting with the largest one. Um, it is cotton. This is a cotton, very lightweight cotton scarf that I pre-washed. Oops. So here's what I do when I am stamping the inks. Gotta slow down. I have these alcohol wipes and I just wipe it as I go. And it's very good that it's kind of coming through the back as well, because then that will, that means it's really soaking up in that fabric. So it's cotton. Make sure you pre-wash with no fabric softener. If you have something that has a lot of sizing in it or um, sheen or something like from a factory, for example, I work with cotton duck fabric a lot. And so I wash that a couple times because they put all these things in there to make it look crisp and clean. Think of like a drop cloth fabric. I wash it a couple times to get all of that out with no fabric softener before I stamp. So this is what I would do to this scarf. I would just keep going down. It's a very long scarf. You can see it goes on and on. So I kind of start with my big ones and arrange those. And then I fill in gaps with my smaller ones. And as you can see, I let some of it go off the edge. Um, you can also do the same thing on a cotton t-shirt. Again, 100% cotton. Make sure you pre-wash. Perfect to do with your white cotton shirts that are stained as well. So make sure you smooth it out. So I do all my flowers and then I come back and I just fill in with leaves. Now you could get really fancy and use your masks, but I'm just kind of doing a random type of design. So I will keep doing that and then fill in. Let's grab a leaf, fill in with the leaves. And I try to change directions and so it looks kind of like just a random splattering of beautiful flowers and leaves. Again, juice up your ink pad, like usually I do it after one to two stamps on fabric. I just juice it up. So there's plenty of ink. <clears throat> okay, so you would keep doing that all the length of the stamps and you know leaves and things and little buds, whatever you have, kind of alternate it. And then I'm gonna uh, bring out the one I did this morning so that we could paint. Let's do some watercolors. So this is the other stamp that I absolutely love. Now this is like a handkerchief size scarf. I thought that would be fun for summer to make this into neon. So we're gonna do some painting neon. So here you can see I started here. Okay, so what I did is I stamped the large flowers first and I took some off the edges, then got some of the smaller stamps, filled those in, 
And then I finished off with the leaves here and there going off the sides. I pulled out just regular acrylic paints today. It doesn't matter what brand you have of paint. Many, many paints work super on cotton fabric. So any of your acrylics that you have, I'm using a very inexpensive acrylic, and I'm also using um, textile medium. Again, it doesn't matter what brand of textile medium. You could also use fabric inks to do this, like scrub it in softly. You can use clay or chalk paints. Okay, now I'm just gonna pick a blossom. I have already heat, press, heat set the ink here. This was the one I did earlier, and I heat set it. So now I'm spritzing it with water because I really want it to flow and be a little bit transparent. And I'm not worried about painting in the lines because I do want it like a washy, watercolor effect. Now, oh, that looks nice, some intensity there. Um, you can switch up your colors. I'm just getting some color down. Isn't that a pretty pink? <laughs> Textile medium is a water-based medium. It softens the feel of the paint on your fabric. So you can mix it with chalk paints, clay-based paints. I'm mixing it with acrylics. And again, it softens up the feel. But what else it does, it makes it more permanent on your fabric. Now, yes, you could do it without the textile medium. So you can see me now, I kind of am layering in a little bit of yellow just for interest. You can see I'm not really worried that much about where it's going, a little bit in the middle. Um, Let's get some green. So again, I have green acrylic paint, but whatever kind of paint you have is fine. Just look at your labels. So many paints can be used on fabrics. You might be surprised. Um, and I need to wash out this brush a little bit better in between or grab a new one. This is just a very inexpensive, I'm using one brush for this whole process. It's a very inexpensive rounded tip brush. I got it in a big set, but if you go with the rounded tips, this one holds so much water. Um, it's just nice for, for this effect. So again, mixing water with the paint. And I want to leave some of that, um, that white, that negative space, because what I will do is I will come back and just kind of, when I'm done painting, I'm just gonna make, if you see, I just kind of dab some paint. I'm gonna make little splatters all over it. But again, I'll take all the colors that I used and I'll go back with the watery color and just do some paint splatters just to fill in the interest with the white. Now, these two over here, I have already painted like you see me doing. These two on the end, I painted earlier. Now watch this. This is a good sign. It means there's lots of watery paint that seeped through all the fibers. That's going to mean that you have a better uh, permanency on your fabric. So someone asked about, my computer's frozen so I can't see it, but I did see a flash that someone asked where to get the scarves. If you just like Google white cotton scarves, this one is just a very inexpensive craft store bandana. So these two right here, I went ahead and put out on the line 
and let it dry and then I heat set it again. So these two, the leaf and the flower, have already been heat set a second time. So the process is every time you do a step, you want to heat set it in between just to make it more permanent. Oh, and I love the way this is happening. I have some blue that I'm going to put in the background too. Why don't we try that first? Ooh, I like this really aqua blue. And again, oh, there's some green on the plate. I'm not going to make things solid, but I do just want hints. Now, another thing you could do is you could get a really cool little texture stamp and stamp some textured glue in between everything. But I'll, I think I'll just keep it really loose. And with the background, especially when I'm doing it, I'm gonna water, get some mist on there before I do that background. So this is a kind of a neony um, pink. Now I'm using what's called lipstick red, but you know, any anything. It's amazing when you're watering these things down, like it really doesn't make that much different what, what hue you have going on. It just looks beautiful when it's all washy. Ooh, and I love how it's kind of making this really cool effect here. This one's still wet. You can see just coming back in with that other shade just gives it so much depth. Hey, I really like the effect that's happening here with the watercolors. So again, let's work on this one. And just pick it out. You don't even have to worry. Like, I just feel like Sometimes it doesn't even matter if you have color theory or you study where the light or the shadows is are. Just the variation, if you look at it and see where does it need a little bit of pop? Where does it need a little bit of added interest? And also what the, the paint does, because I've watercolored this down, what it's also doing is not hiding that beautiful black ink. Um, if you had too much solid paint and not enough water, the textile medium also helps with making it a little bit more transparent. So again, you can see the ratio. Oh, my water's wearing out here. You can see the ratio. I can mostly water, some paint, some textile medium. I usually do like equal parts of paint and textile medium. That one needed, got a little bit too washed out there. So again, you can just keep going back and layering, um, layering your work where you think it needs some depth, dimension, or pop, and keep going. Here's what I have finished so far. So you see how fast that goes. So when I'm done here, I am going to hang it out on my line and just let it dry. Again, I'm gonna do some splattering with it um, to make it just more soft and natural looking. I really love the way it's looking. Um, so here's what's gonna happen with this. It will stiffen up when it dries because this is acrylic paint, but when I heat set it, I'm probably gonna hand wash it the first time just to make sure. Um, but you know, I'll always, my hand painted items, I either hand wash or I use a very gentle cold water fabric softener with a gentle cycle um, and it should be fine. I have been painting on fabrics and, and acrylics since the 1980s and, and they are just fine like they work out so well and these negative image stamps from IOD is just endless what you can do with them.